Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for the Daily Blob, where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty money so I can afford to provide you folks in person hands on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class on AI and SQL coming up tomorrow for me, AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. AI, AI at the Edge will be coming up, AI with REST APIs will be coming up, all kinds of AI stuff is coming up. So if you're interested, go to silicondojo.com to see what the current schedule is. Do remember, free to the end user is not actually free. That's why I shake my brain nipples every day. If you want to help support the project, there is a donor box link down below. And, oh, God. This is, this is getting depressing. Hey, can I, can I go back to talking about Fauci? I mean, yeah, I know, I know talking about Fauci and COVID and all that, you know, it was frustrating, made me want to lose my mind. But at least, at least I didn't feel like it was going to destroy my society. You know the nice thing about screaming about Fauci is, <sighs> however much I may have disagreed with him, I didn't actually think he was going to destroy my society. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, <laughs> AI, on the other hand, <laughs> AI may not be more dangerous than nuclear weapons, but it's probably more dangerous than Fauci. I'll give it that. <laughs> So uh, yeah, the AI insanity just continues with like AI evaluations and the whole nine yards. Do not get me wrong, LLMs are great, all these models are great, neural networks are great, RAG is great, Mamba, Mamba is the new thing instead of Transformers. Anyways, it's, look, it's, it's all fucking fine. It's all like, I've got, I've got issues. Like, I've got issues with email. Like I've got issues with every technology, but quote unquote AI, it's fine enough. The, the problem is these valuations. These valuations have just gotten absolutely insane, right? So I've talked about this. OpenAI is still a startup company. It's now theoretically worth $500 billion, valued at $500 billion. They want to do an IPO next year or the year after for a trillion dollars. They literally say with a straight face that OpenAI, when it hits the stock market, should be worth a trillion dollars. And again, when it hits the stock market, it. Basically, the retail investors want that number to go up. So the real idea is within the next few years, it should be worth five or six trillion dollars. I've talked about this with the CapEx expenses. Uh, Sam Altman wants to spend four trillion dollars on CapEx, all of the rest of it. And this, the, 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 value, the valuations are just bad crap. Insane. It's kind of like with Uber. Uber back in the day, they thought they thought it was going to IPO at 120 billion dollars. And so think about this: Uber is now like 60 or 70 billion dollars. But however long ago it was, eight years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, they thought it was going to uh, to to um, uh, IPO at 120 billion dollars. And the thing is, the thing is, it's not that modern taxi or modern transportation schemes are not valuable. They just weren't worth 120 billion dollars, right? Uh, I think they IP they IPO to like 60 and then dropped to like 30 or 40 pretty damn quick. And now they're they're muddling along or whatever else. The big problem that I see with artificial intelligence and this whole AI thing is just the the value the valuations are just absolutely idiotic, right? The idea being if you can associate AI with nuclear weapons, if you can associate AI with the destruction of humanity, how much is the destruction of humanity worth? Ergo, that's how much AI is worth. You know, but that that that's a stupid. <laughs> That's, that's a stupid connection. That's just, that's just dumb. Uh, basically, if AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons, my question as an actual computer geek is why the hell we have APIs on our nuclear missiles? How, how about, I'm gonna put this out there, we remove the APIs from our nuclear uh, weapons before we worry about AI. But anyways, right, so we got this now. NVIDIA is currently worth $5 trillion. Five, five, $5 trillion. I think Apple, I think Apple was the first like $1 trillion company. It was like in 2017 or 2018. So now we have a $5 trillion company. And Nvidia is worth $5 trillion all, all 100% on the back of this AI quote unquote revolution. Uh, and now the thing that's getting pushed through uh, in the, in the, 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 the money, money uh, articles is $8.5 trillion. NVIDIA, so from Bloomberg, NVIDIA can hit $8.5 trillion on golden wave of AI. So the, I, the idea now is that $5 trillion is actually pretty cheap. 
I, I would definitely want to get in on the ground floor. If I can buy NVIDIA at $5 trillion, it's all up from there. <sighs> this, this, is just, this is just dumb. This is just dumb. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, NVIDIA Corp can add trillions more to its valuation after making history. It's the first company to ever breach a $5 trillion market capitalization. Uh, Loop Capital Markets on Monday raised its price target to a street high view of $350, up from $250. The new target represents upside of more than 70% from NVIDIA's last close of $202 and implies a market cap of more than $8.5 trillion. Uh, the average uh, target is currently $231. Uh, quote, we are entering the next, quote, golden wave of Gen AI adoption, and NVIDIA is at the front uh, end of another a material leg of stronger than anticipated demand. Uh, NVIDIA is about to begin a ramp up of Blackwell graphic uh, processing unit chips, quote, that will essentially double its unit shipments in the next 12 to 15 months while seeing the benefit uh, of ASP expansion, Bruja said. Separately, uh, Rosenblatt Securities raised the price target of NVIDIA to 240 from 215, writing that a recent conference hosted by the company showed it has a stunning, quote, $500 billion plus in Blackwell orders through 2026. Quote, we continue to be impressed by NVIDIA's AI platform rapidly expanding into other markets beyond the hyperscale data centers, wrote Kevin Cassidy. So, yeah, this is currently, oh, what is, what is going on? Uh, if you take a look at the price, that actually gives you a nice little price chart. Here, it shows you, you know, this is where they were. This is where they were back in 2022, way back in 2022, as far as their stock price is concerned. And now they're up to $202 per share. That's, got what, that's what's got them to $5 trillion. And so they think, they think that crap is gonna, gonna keep going up. Um, and who knows, maybe it will. I mean, Tesla still exists. Tesla is Tesla still going up? I get confused. I get confused when I look at Tesla stocks. So, uh, so yeah, this is where this is where the market is is pushing things. I I just don't understand though. Like as a technology professional, one of the things that I find fascinating is over the past six months how much AI disillusionment, disillusionment really has set in from it for, for, for real tech professionals, right? One of the curious things, right? You go back two or three years ago, ChatGPT comes out and everybody loves AI. Everybody won't shut up about AI. Everybody's trying to create these new AI startup companies. One of the fascinating things is, is the people that I've seen working in the AI space actually have become more and more disillusioned uh, with artificial intelligence. And not disillusioned to the, to the point where AI doesn't work or there's no value there, you can't build things off of it, but simply that it's not, it's not kind of the magic bullet that a lot of people thought it was going to be. It's, it's very much just yet another component to your stack, right? So if you, if you understand the problem that you're trying to solve, if you, also, if you already have the idea of the stack that you're trying to build out, right? This is, this is how you can plug AI into that stack uh, to perform a service. Uh, just like DNS provides a service, just like SQL provides a service, just like you know, other things provide a service. Basically LLMs or one of these models, they provide a service within the overall stack. And it's, it's a quirky service. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what you could call a bit of a quirky service. And the curious thing that I've seen is just more and more disillusionment around artificial intelligence. Again, that it'll basically, it's just becoming a component uh, to that overall stack. It's not, it's not the panacea that a lot of people uh, think that it is. And so the, curi the curious thing is just seeing this and seeing the people that I know that I have coffee with and I have beer with becoming more and more disillusioned at the exact same time Time that the stock market is being turbocharged for artificial intelligence. We see all of, we see all of this news, and we see the politicians, and we see the investors. It's just it's just a massive, massive disconnect there, and I don't. I don't see how it's going to work out really well uh, at the end of the day, right? So, so many of the, the AI things uh, that I'm inundated with 
I would prefer not to have, right? Uh, I have my, my platform that runs Silicon Dojo, right? There's an AI component to it. I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it, right? If I had the ability to rip that piece of shit AI component out, I would, right? It is slow. It's glitchy. It gives horrible fucking answers. I'd rather just have a normal search engine routine going on, right? So much of the AI that we see just actually isn't that valuable. And yet we're told we need more and more and more of it. And I just don't see how this is going to work out well at the end of the day. As I've talked about in many other videos, right, it's a little little thing I'll be talking about a lot just because it simply horrifies me. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, has already, has already stated that they have GPUs just sitting, sitting in inventory, right? They have so many GPUs that are literally collecting dust because they can't even slot them in uh, to systems. At the exact same time, NVIDIA stock price is going through the roof. And it's like, well, well, wait a minute. If Microsoft, if Microsoft CEO is admitting that GPUs are sitting on shelves collecting dust, how many of these other fuckers have lots of GPUs on, on the, the shelves collecting dust? We've talked about this before uh, with artificial intelligence uh, for employees and with tech employees uh, previously, where things like Google, right? Google was literally hiring high quality AI professionals and then having them sit on their ass. Literally, literally with the whole AI boom, there was a, there was a court case that went through in the UK uh, about a year ago. Uh, and basically what Google was doing is Google was hiring uh, AI engineers to literally do nothing, right? They were so concerned about AI competition, they would rather pay uh, for, for talented uh, people to do nothing uh, versus not pay and those people possibly go to the competition. So, you know, when I talk about this, when I talk about like $40,000 GPUs sitting on a shelf collecting dust, I know that's, oh, Eli, that's stupid. Who the hell? Who in the hell would spend $40,000 on a GPU and have it sit on a shelf? Who would do that at scale, right? That's stupid. But what you have to understand is what our field is actually like. When you have these multi-trillion dollar companies, right? Um, you have a... Uh, Oh, you have uh, NVIDIA worth $5 trillion. You have OpenAI, supposedly worth $500 billion. You have Microsoft, I don't know, are they at two, are they two, three, four trillion dollars? They're in the trillions of dollars. Apple's in the trillions of dollars. You have Meta. You have these companies that are just worth so much money. So for them, for them to buy a $40,000 GPU is like you buying a Raspberry Pi. Like ima imagine if you were gonna do a project, you're gonna do them with Raspberry Pis, and you thought there might be a Raspberry Pi shortage coming down the pike, or you knew your competition was using Raspberry Pis, and so you thought, hey, you know, I've got a few thousand dollars. If I buy a few more Raspberry Pis, they won't buy, be able to buy as many, and basically kind of kneecap the competition that way. That is literally, it's important to understand, that is literally what these companies can do. The other thing is that most people don't really, you don't follow through with what happens with the projects, right? There, there's, 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 there's things that hit the, uh, hit the, the newspapers or whatever else, the news feeds, but then nobody never follows up with it, right? So like right now, the UAE, the UAE, uh, Microsoft is shipping 60,000, 60,000 GPUs to the UAE, right? So that, that hits the news cycle. You know what doesn't hit the news cycle? 60,000 GPUs actually being powered on. You think about that, right? Think about this. We hear about the sites being determined for these AI data centers, right? We hear about the power consumption for the future of these AI data centers. We hear about, we hear about how many GPUs are being purchased for these AI data centers. Do you realize how little you actually hear about the services being provided by all of this supposed investment in the infrastructure. We hear very little about what the infrastructure is providing us. We hear a lot about what's going into the infrastructure. And so that's where I get concerned with a lot of this kind of thing, because it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, and I talk about this with IBM. I talk about IBM a lot, just I, I find their, uh, their AI, uh, AI path kind of interesting. And one of the curious things AI with their granite model uh, came out with was the whole idea of a much smaller model that basically keeps uh, reiterating, reiterating the question to itself. 
which is kind of interesting, right? So instead of like a, like a reasoning model, like reasoning through, uh, somehow you can take this pretty small model and it basically just keeps re-asking the same damn question to itself. And then it kind of like finds the best answer out of all those. Uh, and what they find is a model that's a fraction of the size of a large model uh, provides uh, the same level of responses, the same quality of responses. And that's one of the things that I talk about with a lot of this kind of thing is that remember, uh, the AI, AI architecture is still in its infancy. There's this idea that it's a mature architecture. It just simply isn't, right? We really do not know how artificial intelligence will really be deployed uh, in 2035. And so when you see all of this massive, massive investment and that it has to be done now, right? We have to buy this stuff now. I think we're going to start to see more and more uh, cracks, cracks in the facade uh, of this whole AI debacle going forward as people realize, again, yeah, it's just not, and that's the thing, like people say, oh, well, Eli, um, I don't know, Google, Google apparently just found a new cancer treatment using an LLM. Like, well, see, there's value. And it's like, yeah, okay, I found a cancer treatment. I mean, that, that's worth a couple billion dollars. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue. Wow, that's worth a couple billion dollars. Yeah, I don't think that's worth 8.5 trillion though. I mean, call me funny, but, Right. Anyways, so what do you think about this? What do you think about the new target for NVIDIA being $8.5 trillion? Can NVIDIA survive the equivalent of a down round? What the hell happens if NVIDIA hits the equivalent of a down round to our entire economy? What happens if more and more people start poking around to the concept that a lot of these big tech companies are simply buying GPUs to shit on, sit on shelves and collect dust? What do you think that'll, what that'll do to the AI revolution? I don't know, put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real what, Nick? And give me a strong American comment. I expect your comment to be able to do bench presses the way our strong cows can. Why, why are cows doing bench? That doesn't sound natural for a cow. Lutnik doesn't care if it's natural for a cow. The important thing is that the cow is strong. Anyways, put your Lutnik comments down below. Remember, uh, what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo. SiliconDojo.com, free to the end user, hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is that you want to do. We have a class coming up on AI and SQL tomorrow. We have a class coming up on AI uh, and web scraping on November 19th. We have AI at the Edge coming up, all kinds of different AI classes. AI, 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 because we are AI washing everything. HTML for AI. <laughs> AI for CSS. Damn right, I'll do it. Anyways, if you're interested in any of those classes, go to SiliconDojo.com. Uh, as always, free to the end user is not actually free. That's why I shake my brain nipples here every day. There's a donor box link down below if you'd like to throw a couple of dollars in. And with that, see y'all later.